all old buildings run through life cycles in their components, so it's no surprise that the palace um, is coming to a point of what you might call major challenge. You can make do and mend, patch and repair for so long, but there will always come a point where you have to do major work, and this is currently usually generated by the mechanical and electrical systems, the servicing, um, heating, cooling, ventilation, small power, which is the electrical works, um, and increasingly data and security concerns. And the palace has reached that point, it needs major work. In terms of the, the demonstrable need for the works, it's, you know, building occupants are aware of leaks, aware of small-scale local disruptions, and what they're not seeing is what's sitting behind that and that there are a large number of makeshift and mend solutions being applied in the background to keep the lights on, to keep the services running, to keep the building occupied, and those are getting bigger and bigger and it's layering one elastoplast over another elastoplast. Another issue is that it was never designed to modern fire safety standards. There's a big issue with a lack of fire compartmentalization. Now, we are, we are used to the outbreak of minor fires within the palace and the way that we're dealing with that at the moment is by the introduction of 24-7 fire safety patrols. Well, in my experience, that's a most unusual way of dealing with things and we really need to, to, to do a full restoration to, to deal with the fire safety aspects and also uh, to deal with the asbestos, which was introduced into the building largely after the Second World War. My research has shown that the visits to Parliament have increased dramatically. There's been a huge effort from Parliament to open up the doors, to have programmes so people can visit the space, and that has worked very well, but it's a very limited experience. So the place could be much better thought through in terms of visiting and understanding the institution. Uh, the space at the moment are very clumsy, the way it's divided between what's public, what's private, but also the whole journey of when you're going to a visit, what you go through, it's not thought through from the public's perspective. It's a sort of an add-on at the moment. And if we had the restoration renewal programme, we could think about that from scratch rather than having it as an add-on to the institution of parliament. Not decanting and staying in the building um, is a significant um, task and challenge in its own right of moving the chess pieces around a very constrained Palace of Westminster chessboard where you open up one area of work to close down another and there'll be significant removing of uh, activities from one location to another over a very long period of time. Direct experience in this area, this part of London, is that you bite the bullet and vacate the building and do it quickly and efficiently. If you don't do that, it can take three to four times longer and cost a lot more and generally not give as good a result at the end of the project. Well, I think there's a big accessibility opportunity, both from the point of view of making uh, more of the palace accessible to the public and making the parts that are already accessible more easy for people who have particular needs to, uh, to get to. Um, there's also a real opportunity in explaining and interpreting the palace uh, which has some outstanding pieces of architecture within it including original medieval uh, parts of the palace which are relatively little known. This project by the very coarse figures that are available appears to represent about 3% of the heritage sector's output. So it is a significant contributor, but I see that as an opportunity to increase skills and training and very big programmes like this, if they are built around the training and skills of craftspeople can be extremely productive for the economy. And so the restoration renewal program would provide an opportunity to a transformative opportunity, I would say, to think about how we share the space, how we present the space to the public also. And this is not at all about interfering with parliamentarians' work. It wouldn't get in the way at all. It's about thinking about how we, we, have, we have this space, this amazing building, how can we present it to the public in a much smarter way, but at the same time also enhancing the experience of the visitors while acknowledging also the works that parliamentarians do. Well, I think this largely resolves into, into two main options. 
One would be staying put uh, in, in the building, e either in whole or in part. And, and the implications for that are that obviously it will take longer because the contractor will be working around the existing occupants and that means it will cost more. But for the occupants and visitors to the building, it will be quite disruptive. At the other end of the spectrum would be a full decant, which would enable the contractor to get on with the job in, in, in a very focused way. Uh, the contractor would have a free run at things and uh, would be, that would mean that the work could be done more quickly uh, and more economically. Uh, but of course, it does mean that Parliament would have to decant to other premises and that's why that, that this decision is really a decision for Parliament itself.